a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Book of the Month. I am literally surrounded by 80 plus books, you cannot even see all of them, that I will be unhauling. Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Over the past couple of years, I have collected way too many books and I've been doing booktube since I was 15. And I think what happens really quickly when you get into like a new community with your new favorite hobby is that you collect all of these new things, aka books in my case, that are just being talked about a lot on the internet or that are just cheap and you might be interested in them and then you get this. Um, years later, you have a collection of books that feel like they don't fit with you anymore and they just take up a lot of space in your room. <laughs> and I need to make room for new babies that I do wanna keep. So grab yourself a nice cup of coffee, tea, chai, something refreshing and a little snack because this is gonna be a long video. <laughs> but before I'm gonna show you the 80 plus, I'm serious, 80 plus books that I'm getting rid of, I need to talk about today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month, a sponsor that has been adding books to my collection as well. <laughs> but I love them so, so much. If you didn't know already, Book of the Month is a super fast growing online bookish surface, perfect for every single reader out there. I'm absolutely obsessed with what they do because their team fits hundreds of different books and they curate a list of the most exciting new releases, early releases, debut authors that you can choose from for like a super affordable price. New release hardcover fiction is always really expensive. I think around $30 per book. Do note that Book of the Month only ships to the USA and Canada, so no international shipping, unfortunately. Each month you can choose from five to seven options, but even if you don't like any of the books that they chose for that month, Book of the Month is a risk-free service, which means that you could either like skip a month if you don't like any of the picks or you can choose from like a huge backlist of books that they offer on their website as well. And if you also see more books that you would like, they also have a great add-on feature. So this month I got sent two of their December picks. Let me show you what they are. First off, I have The Circus Train by Amita Parikh. The Circus Train is a historical fiction. All the world's a stage in this moving World War II story about a traveling circus and finding your path in dark times. Book of the Month always kills it, no pun intended, <laughs> with their murder mystery pick. So I absolutely wanted to choose All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. Since her son went missing, Isabella Drake can't sleep. After reading this thriller, you might not be able to either. Book of the Month is actually running an amazing special December offer. If you use code WONDER, you will get your first Book of the Month book for just $5. Are you kidding me? <laughs> $5 for a new release hardcover fiction book. Honestly, that is absolutely amazing. So a link will be in my description box down below so you can check out Book of the Month. Again, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. And now let's start with unhauling 80 plus books. I know, that sounds ridiculous. I do realize that. <laughs> my approach to this unhaul is that I have put these piles into different genres. So if you're just interested in sci-fi or contemporary or fantasy, you can click on the timestamps here down below. The question that I get asked the most often when I upload one of these is, what are you gonna do with all these books? And I would love to actually do a book swap. And since I'm from the Netherlands, I prefer swapping books with people from the Netherlands as well. I have made little Little templates that I will be sharing on my Instagram for books that I'm looking for. And if you have those, plus you want one of the books that I want to use for that book swap, then definitely send me a DM on Instagram, which is at Sabine's Book Nook. Others I'll probably try to sell as well. And some of these I'm also just giving away to charity shops because a lot of these have also been gifted to me. Okay, <laughs> it's time. Let's get started with my first little pile, which is sci-fi. And that is the smallest one. So first I have The Martian by Andy Weir. I read this one. I liked it, but I didn't think it was as witty and fun as most of the internet did. Apparently I watched the movie. I don't remember much of it as well. So it's Bye Bye Martian for this one. Then I have Space Between Us by Jamal Aflatuni. This was sent to me by the author. I tried reading the first 60 pages. Didn't pique my interest. So it's going. Then I have The Perishing by Natasha Dayan. This one sounded really cool. I believe it was about a black immortal main character who can like time travel. Was that it? That was kind of the idea that I got from it, but it has received really, really poor reviews and I don't want to put my time into a book that's probably not going to be that great. Yeah, that's it. Three books on my sci-fi 
pile. Then I have the tiniest pile of nonfiction and manga and stuff like that. Also, little disclaimer in between, some of these books that I will be getting rid of are also gifts that I have received from friends in the past, like for my birthday or just something else. And if you're one of my friends who sent me one of those books, please don't feel offended that I'm gonna get rid of them. It's totally nothing personal. I've probably really enjoyed reading that book, but I have limited space here. <laughs> and I just wanna keep books on my shelves that I'm really, really interested in reading or that I absolutely love or really liked. I'm forever thankful and grateful that you gifted it to me. So like I said, nothing personal. That being out of the way, a nonfiction book that I have zero interest in reading is The Anthropocene. Wait, how do you how do you say that word? I have no clue. Anthropocene reviewed by John Green. And I have not liked any of John Green's books in the past. That might be an unpopular opinion. I know that this is like an essay collection, so it's completely different from his works of fiction. I just don't want to read it. <laughs> and I already have a friend of mine who does. Then I have Orange Volume 1. I really wanted to read this manga, but when I ordered it, I accidentally ordered it in German instead of Dutch. And I don't speak German. Then I have Attack on Titan. I loved this one when I read it five years ago, I think. But if I'm correct, there are more than 10 volumes out from this series, but I don't have the money to spend like 100 euros on mangas that I read within two hours each. So I'd rather just watch the anime show. Then I have Lumberjames Volume 1. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Again, not gonna spend that much money. And then last, I have the Sherlock Chronicles. This is kind of like a behind the scenes of the BBC show, and Sherlock is one of my favorite shows. I absolutely adore it so incredibly much, but I have rarely flipped through this book. These kinds of like coffee table books, I never take the time to just like flip through it and actually read the pages. The second little pile over here is like historical fiction and especially about the first one, which is Peach Blossom Spring by Melissa Fu. I'm still doubting whether I want to get rid of this book because it does sound interesting. I think it's about war, migration, the power of telling stories, and then we are following like a Chinese family. I've heard it's a beautiful book, so maybe you guys can convince me to keep it, but also if I'm gonna keep it, like what am I gonna read it? But that's that could be a question for all the books that are on my shelves, so. <laughs> Convince me to keep this one and I might do so. Then I have Blood for Blood by Ryan Grouding. I also actually own Wolf by Wolf, but I think it's at my boyfriend's house because he tried reading a book three years ago and he still hasn't finished it. I remember really enjoying this duology, which is like an alternative history where Hitler stayed alive and you kind of see what the world would have been like. The Magnolia Palace by Viona Davis. I have no interest in reading this book. Same goes for The Family by Naomi Krupp. Bitsky. So sorry for butchering your name, maybe. Also, this one has received low ratings, which puts me off. And then the last one is Adriana Trigiani, The Good Left Undone. I'm just like not a huge fan of historical fiction. Then this large pile, I'm so scared of it falling over, <laughs> of contemporary books. So let's start off with Moxie by Math Jennifer Matthew. Wait, I was gonna say Matthew Catu. I cannot really speak, but I loved Moxie when I read it five years ago. In my getting introduced to YA contemporary feminist fiction, I still think I would actually quite enjoy this book. I also watched the movie, which was enjoyable, but it's taking up space on my shelves right now. A book that I also really enjoyed is Me, My Dad, and the End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean. And this is a middle grade novel in which our main character kind of just like finds out that his mom and dad are divorced because his dad is gay. And it was a really wonderfully hopeful, loving story that I would recommend everyone to give a read. Then I have Blood Moon by Lucy Cthu. I was very disappointed in this one. <laughs> this is like a YA feminist contemporary that deals with a girl who gets her period during the first time that she's having sex with someone. And because the person that she had sex with is a shitty person and tells about this whole ordeal, she gets like thrown into this like whole online shaming incident. It's a story written in verse, which was nice and refreshing, but I didn't like the friendships in this one. It was just a little bit of a letdown. Then we have Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. My copy is so old that you see the sun damage on the spine versus like the front of the cover. This is an oldie. It's a classic one that I read and liked, but. 
I have no strong feelings about this one. Then I have We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. I actually really quite enjoyed this book, but I feel like the author is a little bit questionable. So despite me really loving the story itself, whenever I look at this book, I just get really mixed feelings. Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. Loved this um, LGBTQ contemporary story. I thought it was really great. For me personally, it didn't live up to the hype, but I know that some of my friends also want to read this one. So I'd rather give them a chance to pick it up than for it to become dusty on my shelves. Then I have On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, a Dutch copy. What is the original title of this one again? Let me look it up. It's called The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake or Wat de Zee Vertelt. <laughs> in Dutch. I got this as like a review copy and I read it and I really liked it. Do I remember a single thing what it's about? No, but it's like an LGBTQ coming of age story with a little bit of like a mystery thrown into it, if I'm correct. Then I have two books, which I got from Brit when we both did a booktuber buys my book haul or buys me books kind of video a couple of years ago. We wanted to make like a dedicated reading vlog, but we never did. I did read both of them though. So the first one is Tell Me Again How a Crush Should Feel by Sarah Verison. This one was one of the worst books that I've ever read in my entire life. And then the other one is If I'm Being Honest by Emily Wibberly and Austin Siegmund Broca. This one was surprisingly nice. It's kind of like a reimagining of The Taming of the Shrew by Shakespeare. Have never read anything by Shakespeare, so I don't know like how well this compares to that play, but I do know that our main character really goes through a lot of character growth. She starts off as an absolute bitch and she becomes a bit more likable by the end. So yeah. <laughs> then I have The Way Back to You by Michelle Andriani and Mindy Scott. I bought this one when I went to America in 2016. So the only reason why I'm keeping on to this book is because of sentimental reasons. I believe that this is about a young person who passed away and their organs were donated to a certain family. The person who passed away, their friends are going to visit the family of the person who received their organs. Am I making any sense? Then another review copy, which is Anna K by Jenny Lee. This just doesn't feel like a book for me. I feel like this book is more for a younger audience who would like to read a story with lots of drama. That's what I'm getting from this book. And that's just not what I'm looking for right now. Then I have Love, Hate and Other Filters by Samira Ahmed. Wonder by RJ Palacio. And this one I'm actually doubting to put away, which is Amy and Roger's Epic D by Morgan Matson because I had such a good time reading this book. So I might let on to this one just for nostalgic feelings and memories. Okay, yes, we're good. The pile for fantasy books is even bigger. Here we are. <laughs> so for fantasy, first of all, I have the box set of The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. This is one that I'm also a little bit doubtful about, but that is Air Awakens, book one by Elise Kova. Elise Kova, I think, writes a lot of fairy fantasy novels. I've literally never heard anyone talk about it, but these are quite short. They're below 300 pages each. And I think it has something to do with elemental magic as well, but that's all that I know about it. I don't know what this book is about. <laughs> then I have a Song Below Water by Bethany C. Merrow. I tried reading this one, I think two years back, and I just could not get into it. Then I have Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. This is very much like Harry Potter inspired, and I, I don't need anything like that because... JK Rowling. Do I need to say more? No, I don't. Then I have The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. And I remember picking this one up because of Peru's project here on YouTube. This is, was one of her favorite series way, way back, but these books are gigantic. Gigantic. Book one is over 700 pages long. The magic system had something to deal with color spectrums, I think, which sounded cool. I remember a bit of the critiques being sexist elements in this one as well. Don't quote me on anything that I'm telling you right now because my memory is so bad. <laughs> then I have the Ravenclaw edition of Chamber of Secrets by JK Rowling. I already gave book one away to one of my friends who wants to read the Harry Potter series and I'm happily to pass on these books to them. The Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman. This is book four in the Practical Magic series. I don't own those books. Darling Girl by Liz Mikalski. Mikalski? I have zero interest in reading anything about Peter Pan and fairy tale retellings are always kind of like meh 
for me. Then I have The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah and I really want to read this book but I own another edition of this one. Book of the Month sent this one in one of their boxes but I also received a beautiful fairy loot edition so I'm keeping my fairy loot edition and giving this one to one of my friends. Then I have Nocturna by Maya Montagne. I believe that this is actually quite a fun entertaining YA fantasy but it's in Dutch. I rarely read Dutch. I definitely prefer reading in English especially that's like the first language that the book was written in. Ooh, a book that I really did not like was A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lang. So we're getting rid of it. The paperback of Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Mass. I bought the hardcover a couple of years back. Still haven't read past book two in this series and will I ever? I don't think so but still there's hope so I'm hanging on to the books. The other book that I want to unhaul is The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski but look by the way at the freaking similarities of these covers. It's ridiculous. I believe that a couple of years back that was also kind of like a discussion that was going on. And then the last one on my fantasy pile I'm hesitant about and that is Kaiki, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering this name, by Fashnavi Patel, doubting to get rid of this one because it has been hyped up so much, also on TikTok, but I am not the best with mythology retellings. If you've read this one, let me know if it's worth the read. Let's do a little tea break and I will get back to you in a little bit to showcase you the other three piles that I still need to get through. The next couple of books that we're gonna get through are mysteries, murder mysteries, paranormal stuff, things like that. I'm just all kind of putting them in the same category. I have Misery by Stephen King. Read this one for a reading Noelle Gallagher's favorite books and I quite liked it. King's writing style though is very much thought on paper and I don't feel like it's anything super special that I want to keep on my shelves forever. This one is a classic. We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. It's gaining so much popularity again on TikTok but this is the first book that I picked up in English because of booktube and what kind of like started my whole journey here. So this one does hold a lot of sentimental value. Then I have the complete box set of of the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. Bought this one on a whim because Jessie the Reader, also a classic booktuber, is just obsessed with this whole series and I wanted to be obsessed with it too. Have I ever felt the urge to pick it up? No. So it's been on my shelf for years. Let's just pass it on to someone else. <laughs> then I have a pretty recent read which is The Girl and the Ghost by Hannah Alfok. Oh fuck, why am I saying that? I'll cough, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I read this together with Leonie for a book club that we did in the past. So we did a little discussion with Mali, since this is like a Malaysian folklore paranormal middle grade. It was really enjoyable, but it wasn't like as dark or like what I expected from the story as what I wanted it to be. Then I have The Sacrifice Box by Martin Stewart. And I remember picking this one up because it sounded so much like Stranger Things, but then in a YA mystery. History, but I've heard pretty bad things about this one. Then I have There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. Perkins? I think we mostly know Stephanie Perkins from the Anna and the French Kiss trilogy, which was just like a 2014 booktube stable. When I did a book swap in like one of my previous unhauls, someone put this book as an extra for me, which I do appreciate, but unfortunately this YA murder mystery doesn't interest me enough to pick it up soon. One of the worst books that I read in 2022 is All These Bodies by Kendar Blake. The story didn't make any sense. I still don't know what happened. What was the conclusion? Just don't pick this one up. It's a waste of your time. I'm also getting rid of the A Study in Charlotte trilogy by Brittany Cavallero. I was extremely excited to read this whole, it's actually a quartet now that I'm thinking of it. It is heavily inspired by Sherlock. Basically you follow the descendants of Sherlock Holmes and Watson who are attending a private school. There's a murder that's happening. They are being accused of it because they seem like the prime suspects and they are both gonna solve the murder. Read this one this year, thought it was enjoyable, but I wasn't impressed. And there's also like a romance in this book, which I just think is completely unnecessary. So I'm giving it to one of my friends who wants to read this series. And the last murder mystery that I'm gonna unhaul is Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens. This is actually also a signed copy. Okay, we have one big pile to get through left, which is like my fairy loot owl crate 
special editions pile, which is mostly filled with fantasy books too. So here is the pile. I think it had like a fairy loot subscription about four years ago. So some of those books are still in this pile as well. Some of them I have been gifted in order for like a unboxing video for fairy loot or owl crate. But the thing with these fantasy boxes is that sometimes there are just books in there that I've like never heard of and just don't speak to me. And that is I think the case for most of these. Plus also the fact that I feel like YA fantasy is a genre that I don't prioritize, that I'm kind of like growing out of. So yeah, let's just get right into it. So first off, I have a Master of One by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett. I think that this is like a heist face story and you follow six different perspectives. Then I have the Owl Crate edition of Sisters of the Snake by Serena and Sasha. Nanua, Star Daughter by Shweta Takrar, one of the worst YA fantasies I've ever read. The premise sounded so cool. The execution was just not. <laughs> this Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. This is like a mixture between fantasy and sci-fi. Then I have Everless by Sarah Holland. I feel like this would just be a really mediocre YA fantasy. Don't want to waste my time on that. The same goes for The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Ooh, the most controversial one, I think, is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. Beautiful Edition and a lackluster YA fantasy. I know that so many people love this trilogy, but I think it's mostly just for like the little bit of spice that it has or just like the dark main character's love interest. And I just really did not like them as a couple. And the mystery just really fell flat for me. Then I have The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. Read a couple of short stories, wasn't too impressed. Witches Steeped in Gold by CNN Smart. The reviews of this one, aren't that great. I have Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart. I actually really quite liked book one in this duology. I also bought book two, the paperback edition, which is called Queen of Ruin. It's just been such a long time. I don't think I would enjoy this book as much as I did a couple of years back. Then I have Heart of Thorns by Brie Barton. Again, sounds kind of mediocre. And the same goes for The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Robinkowski. And like another fairy tale inspired retelling, Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. So yeah, that's th that's a huge pile. <laughs> and now let's go on to my last couple of books. I'll quickly move through the last pile, which are all general fiction and romance novels. So first off, I have The, the X Hex by Erin Sterling. And this is a witchy fantasy romance. It's very, very light on the fantasy element. It was fun, but nothing more than that. I know the sequel is also out. I have heard that that one is better, but I don't want to continue on with it. Then I have The Neighbor's Secrets by L. Ellison Heller. I've heard awful things, to be honest, about how to marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by K.M. Jackson. Like our main character, I believe, is actually trying to convince Keanu Reeves that they are like a match made in heaven. And I've heard reviews saying that it's kind of like, it comes across as stalkery. I don't like that in a romance. Then I have The Lifestyle by Taylor Hahn. Absolutely no interest in picking up that one. And the same kind of goes for Damnation Spring by Ash Davidson. So that is the last book that I'm putting on my huge, gigantic unhaul pile. Definitely let me know in the comments down below if you are absolutely convinced that I would love one of the books that I want to get rid of. Definitely give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the the next one. Bye!